Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning. So now we are in chapter 8, which is the hydroxy compound. And we're going to focus on the subtopic of 8.4, which is chemical properties, part 2 of the video. So in this video, we're going to do the identification test in order to distinguish different classes of alcohol. So we're going to react our alcohol with Lucas reagent, where the Lucas reagent consists of the concentrated hydrochloric acid and zinc dichloride as its catalyst. Okay. And this is going to help us to identify whether the alcohol is primary, secondary, or tertiary alcohol. Next, we're going to do the iodoform test, where the iodoform test is going to use iodine, hence the name iodo. And this is going to be happening in the solvent of the aqueous sodium hydroxide. Okay, And this is used to identify the methyl carbonyl group, which is the structure of CH3CHOH. So if you were to expand the structure here, we're going to have the structure of C, CH3, H, and OH here. So when there is this kind of structure, the iodoform test is going to give a positive result, hence a product of CH, CHI3 going to be forming. And here will refer to iodoform. Okay, so you're going to learn about this in the latter slide. Okay. Also, the iodoform test can be used to identify methyl carbonyl. Okay, this one is known as the methyl carbonyl, which is a cohesion. But in the latter chapter, which is the chapter of carbonyl, the iodoform test can also be used to identify methyl carbonyl, which is the structure of C double bond O and CH3. Okay. But for now, let us focus on the methyl carbonyl first. Okay, so without any further ado, let us start. So first, Lucas test. So Lucas test is used to differentiate between primary, secondary, and tertiary by observing the rate of the reaction between the alcohol and the Lucas reagent in order to form alkyl chloride. Okay, so alkyl chloride here is an example of the haloalkyl. So the Lucas reagent include the mixture of the concentrated HCl as well as the zinc chloride. So for the general reaction, we can uh, mix our alcohol here with HCl which is in the concentrated and include our zinc catalyst here, zinc chloride. So by the end of the reaction, OH is going to be substituted with chlorine, RCl and water going to be produced as the byproduct. So the alkyl chloride that's being produced here okay the alkyl chloride that is being produced here uh, gonna be cloudy due to the formation of the alkyl chloride so they're gonna form a two layers because the alkyl chloride are basically insoluble in water because no hydrogen bonding can be formed here so um, the formation of the alkyl chloride gonna be seen as here so it's gonna be cloudy and it's going to be two layers of the alkyl halide as well as the water here. Okay, about Lucas test, we're going to talk into the time taken for the cloudiness to appear and this relates to the alcohol reactivity. So the reactivity of alcohol towards Lucas test is going to be the tertiary alcohol is going to be the most reactive followed by the secondary alcohol and lastly followed by the primary alcohol. So the tertiary alcohol is the most reactive towards the um, Lucas test and this is shown by a, a, by a reaction of the tertiary alcohol with HCl in the presence of the zinc chloride here. So the tertiary alcohol can undergo SN1 mechanism so it will be easier for the chloride ions to replace the OH here and this is going to form um, a cloudy solution here. Okay, so the fastest going to be the tertiary alcohol followed by secondary and the primary going to be the slowest. So by the end of the observation, you can see that the tertiary alcohol, which is the most reactive, going to change the solution into cloudy immediately and there will be two layers of solution going to be formed. For secondary, it will take a longer time in order to be cloudy roughly around 5 to 10 minutes. For primary, um, the, the cloudy solution will not be formed even after 10 minutes. Okay, so now let us look into a few other examples here. 
So let's say if we have this alcohol here, so this alcohol, which is the carbon attached to hydroxyl group, so this is going to be a primary alcohol. So when a primary alcohol reacts with HCl and zinc chloride, this is known as the Lucas test. Okay, so OH is going to be replaced with Cl. However, this reaction will take a very, very long time to occur. So you can say that there are going to be no observable changes and it does not form cloudy solution. Okay, and for this carbon here, this carbon is going to attach with two carbon, uh, two carbon atom. So it's going to be a secondary alcohol. So when a, when a secondary alcohol is tested under Lucas test, which it reacted with HCl with the presence of zinc chloride, you know that the OH is going to be replaced by a Cl as the product, which is the alkyl chloride. And this is going to produce a byproduct of water. And then, um, because, it's a, because it is a secondary alcohol, the time taken for it to turn cloudy will just take about roughly five minutes. Okay, and for the third react uh, for the third structure here, this carbon here is going to be attaching with one, two, and three alkyl group. So it is a tertiary alcohol. So when it is that tested under Lucas test, which is HCl and zinc chloride, the OH can be replaced with Cl uh, very very easily because tertiary alcohol is going to be very reactive towards the Lucas test. So what we're going to do is that OH is going to be replaced with Cl and H2O is released by the byproduct. So it's going to turn cloudy immediately and two layers of solution are going to be formed. Okay, so that's for Lucas test. Now we're going to look into the last test which is the iodoform test. So the iodoform test is used to, pres to identify the presence of the methyl alcohol or known as the methyl carbonyl group. So as mentioned, the methyl carbonyl refers to the carbon that is attached with OH, CH3, and also the hydrogen. So the reagent needed for the iodoform test is iodine in the, pres in the presence of the aqueous sodium hydroxide. And if the reaction is positive where this structure is present, then a yellow precipitate is going to be formed. And this yellow precipitate refers to the triiodomethane or known as the iodoform. Okay, and this is refers to the CHI3. Okay, now uh, for the iodoform test, the methyl alcohol group here gonna undergo cleavage. Okay, they are going to put to scan and it gonna be forming a carboxylic ion as well as the haloform. So let's say if you have a structure here. And you're going to do an iodoform test where you're going to react iodine in the presence of the aqueous sodium hydroxide. Okay, and this is going to produce a carboxylate ion. So this is what we know as the carboxylate ion. Okay, and the carboxylate ion will carry a negative charge and the positive charge metal which comes from NaOH going to be attached nearby to the carboxylic ion in order to neutralize the charges. So one negative and the other one positive. Okay, so when there is, when the carbon here containing OH, attaching with CH3 and attaching with H, which refers to the methyl carbonyl group, then it's going to produce a triiodomethane or iodoform, which give a yellow color precipitate. Okay. So now we're going to look into example here. So if we look into this example, this carbon is going to be attaching with hydrogen as well as it's going to be attaching with CH3. So we know that a methyl carbonyl group is going to be present. So if we're going to react that with iodine in the presence of the aqueous NaOH, so ensure that you write aqueous here. A carboxylic ion is going to be formed, and the meat and the solid and the sodium metal is going to be close by with the carboxylate ion, and this is going to produce a triiodomethane because the um, metal carbonyl group is present. Okay, and this gives us a yellow precipitate by the end of the reaction. Okay, and remember, 
uh, as what you can see here, the carboxylate ion going to have less than one carbon. Okay, at first you're going to have one, two, and three, but here going to be only two carbon chain. So it's going to be reduced by one carbon chain. Okay, so similar to this one. So we're going to expand the structure first. Okay, COH, CH, and CCH3 here. And R here refer to the CH2, CH3. So when this structure here is present, so it refers to a methyl carbonyl group. So when we react with iodine at NaOH aqueous, what we're going to get is the carboxylate ion. Okay, so carboxylate ion here, first we have 1, 2, 3, 4, but now we're going to have 1, 2, 3. So the carboxylate ion is going to be reduced by one carbon chain. Okay, and it's going to carry a negative charge and the sodium metal is going to be close by in order to neutralize the charges. And similarly, when the metal carbonyl group is present, a uh, yellow precipitate of the triiodomethane is going to be formed. Okay, now for this alcohol here, okay, so for this alcohol here, we're going to have CH, H, and OH. And this attached with the alkyl group, which is the big cyclohexanol, a uh, cyclohexane here. Okay, so C attached with OH, C attached with H, and C attached with H. So it is not a metal carbonyl. Okay, bukan metal carbonyl because metal carbonyl need to be attached with COH, CCH3, and CH. So when you react with iodine and NaOH aqueous, you will be seen no observable changes and no yellow precipitate gonna be formed. Okay? So I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye!